On this week's show, we join Evan Schmarter as she shows us all about RVing in and around Tucson. And we'll see her favorite places to eat, drink, and have fun. Also, if you're planning on buying a trailer, having the right toy package can make all the difference in the world. Jeff Johnston shows us how relatively easy it is to install the correct package. These stories and more on this episode of Rolling On TV. Closed and Spanish captioning, where available, is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. Tucson, Arizona. Warm winters, stately saguaro cactus in a flavor all its own. No wonder RVers love to snowbird here. I'm at the Tucson Visitors Bureau with Dan Gibson. He's the Director of Communications for Visit Tucson. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on your show. Well, we're so glad to have you here. And tell me about the RVer impact and RVers here in Tucson, Arizona. You know, RVing is obviously a big thing for us. I mean, it's not just the weather, but I think that we have a lifestyle and a relaxing, laid back sort of atmosphere that people really enjoy. Uh, that being said, there's plenty to do and plenty to see, so that's it's a nice combination for people here. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a beautiful city. Um, so, what do you love to do in town? You know, I mean, one of my favorite things to do is I, I love to eat and drink here. I think we have such a wide variety of options from, you know, $1.50 tacos on South 12th Avenue to, you know, high-end dining at Downtown Kitchen and Cocktails or Pizzeria Bianco downtown, which is uh, widely considered the best pizza place in the country. So, you know, that's the great thing is this casual atmosphere that you can still wear jeans to high-end places, but you can also go, uh, you know, grab a snore and hot dog for a couple bucks, too. Do you know how many RVers are here? You know, it's uh, we haven't done a specific number for it, but we know that, you know, it's it's obviously a big influx of people here, and, and anyway, you're driving down the street, you'll see RVers, but also filling up. You know, we have a wide variety of places of campgrounds and uh, services for RVers, so those places are often pretty close to full during our busy season, mm -hmm. which is January through April. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, the best weather. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a perfect time to be here, and it helps, uh, especially this year, that the weather is sort of miserable other places, so it's been great <laughs> for us. I'm like, oh, it's 14 in Kansas City? Come on down to Tucson, where it's 70. So. Oh, that's too funny. Now, what about a attractions and museums. What's hot to see here? I think uh, one of the things you absolutely have to see if you come to Tucson is the Arizona Snore Desert Museum. It's generally considered one of the best museums in America. It's uh, it's sort of the basic idea is that it's a zoo for animals from the south, uh, southern Arizona Sonoran Desert, but it's so much more than that. It's a, it's an experience where you really understand the desert itself. Uh, it's surprising to a lot of people. There's an aquarium there that showcases some of the sea life in northern Mexico. So there's uh, bighorn sheep, there's prairie dogs, there's sea otters. It's just this a wide variety of uh, you know flora and fauna from this area. Mm -hmm. What about a hidden gem? What is something that people don't really know a lot about but you think they should not miss when they're here? I think you have to see Sanavir, the mission. Uh, it's a little bit uh, south and west of Tucson but it's su super close. Um, it's you know focuses on it, it's a mission that was built in the 1500s uh, and it's a collision of sort of the Native American culture, the Spanish culture that was here and it's still an operating church so you can see mass there but it's got a uh, wide variety of artwork, Native artwork from the time period that was restored by actually the same people that did the uh, Sistine Chapel. Really? So the, yeah, so it went through a lot of renovations recently, so it's, it's a beautiful place. It's unlike anything else in America. We were there quite a long time ago, and we had some fry bread. Yeah, you have to have the fry bread. So uh, it's, you know, it's dough, it's a, it's a uh, tona odom and Navajo treat uh, thrown into a fryer. You can be sweetened up with, you know, uh, honey and sugar, or served as a taco with uh, red chili beef or beans or uh, lettuce. It's a, it's an incredible meal. So whether people are here for a week or a whole snowbird season, they're going to be busy. Oh, certainly. There's so much to do here, especially in that time of year. You know, in January, uh, you know, we, we have the, you know, the gem show starts in January, which is one of the largest gem shows in the world. Uh, we have soccer preseason. We have a golf tournament. We have the Festival of Books. There's really something happening pretty much every weekend. So, you know, if you want to just lay back and relax or you want to get out and see people and the sights of the city, there's something going on all of the time. Wow. Well, I know I love it, and I've been busy every day here, well, and good. there's still so much more to see. Well, we try to keep people in touch with that stuff so if you come to visit Tucson.org our website or you go to our social media presences on Facebook and Twitter or Instagram or you just stop by the visitor center here we're happy to help you however we can. Wonderful well thank you so much Dan oh, I my appreciate pleasure. it. Oh I'm happy to help. Choices. 
We'll get back to Ivan and Sunny Tucson right after a word from our sponsors. Simply put, Thetford's AquaChem has outsold all its competitors combined because it's the strongest holding tank deodorant available. It provides the strongest odor control around the clock in all temperatures and conditions. It quickly liquefies waste and tissue and is 100% biodegradable. AquaChem, the industry standard for 50 years. For more information, visit Thetford.com. AquaChem, another great product from Thetford. Never run out of propane again. With Level Check, there's no more guesswork. Just run the gauge over the tank, and when the light turns from red to green, you'll know exactly how much propane you have left. It's that simple. Level Check, another great product from Truma. For more information, visit levelcheck.com. There are a number of terrific parks in town, something for everyone. Let me tell you about three of your plentiful choices. We're here at Voyager RV Resort, paradise for an active RVer. From pickleball, the fastest growing senior sport in the U.S. and a cross between tennis and ping pong, to golf, to art such as stained glass and lapidary, pools, spas, saunas, and a workout room, to concerts, discussions, and events, you'll find plenty to do at Voyager. The Lazy Days KOA has a lot going for it. It's a beautiful park, including their fabulous lemon, orange, and grapefruit trees. They've got a lovely pool, a terrific restaurant, and a convenient central location. If low key's more your style, you might look at the Pima County Fairgrounds. With easy I-10 access, it's perfect for just soaking up the Tucson sun, and it's an inexpensive basic choice. So what is there to do after you've found your perfect Tucson RV spot? plenty. Farm markets, fabulous sunsets, festivals galore, miles of bike trails, and five mountain ranges will definitely catch your attention. Tucson is home to the globally recognizable saguaro cactus. Well preserved in two national parks, Saguaro National Park East and West, as well as the spectacular Catalina State Park. These gems offer hiking trails and picnic shelters, loop drives, and up-close views of this desert cactus that grows nowhere else in the world except right here in the Sonoran Desert. If art is more your thing, don't miss the DeGrazia Gallery in the Sun on the north side of town. DeGrazia was famous for his impressionistic paintings of Native Americans and children. He's also famous for burning a number of his originals. It's said to have been $1.5 million worth in protest of the inheritance tax. Enjoy a stroll through the museum, his home and studio, and don't miss the simple but spectacular Mission in the Sun, showcasing de Grazia's hand-painted frescoes. Fabulous. There's the Titan Missile Museum just south of town, where you can go deep down into a missile silo and see what it would have been like down there if the red button had been pushed during the Cold War. Does science capture your imagination? Then you're going to really love Biosphere 2, now run by the University of Arizona. Of course, Biosphere 1 is the planet Earth. You might recall that in the early 90s, scientists known as Biospherians were sealed inside the glass dome for two years, conducting Earth science research and growing most of their food in this man-made environment. Today you can tour the biosphere, see the biomes, walk the grounds, and learn more about how these folks lived, cooked, and recreated. Like my pal Dan at the Tucson Visitor Center mentioned, Tucson is reinventing itself as a foodie destination and your dining options are many, from fine and fancy to simple and delicious. For example, on my way out to a hike, I often stop at a local sandwich joint, Beyond Bread, and pick up one of their fabulous flagship sandwiches to share with my husband Ray. It's so good. Sunday mornings are reserved for my favorite Tucson food truck, Planet of the Crepes, at St. Philip's Farmer's Market. They're experts at using farm fresh products Products from the market vendors to produce mouth-watering meal-sized crepes. Yum! One of my favorite local gem spots to sit down and enjoy a relaxing meal is Poco and Mom's Cantina, perfectly located for delicious dining after a drive to the top of Mount Lemmon or a hike through Sabino Canyon. Score a table on their patio, enjoy the fabulous weather, ambiance, and the terrific New Mexican-style food. 
Oh, Taylor, thank you. Oh my gosh, this looks great. Goodness knows there's so much more I could tell you about Tucson, but I suggest you come on down yourself and design your own Southern Arizona snowbird adventure. I'm Evan from sunny Tucson, Arizona. Cheers. Coming up after the break, we'll join Jeff in Oregon as he shows us how to install the proper toy package. We'll be right back. Is it now the perfect time to turn your old pop-up tent trailer from looking like this to looking like this? Treat yourself and your family to a bug-free camping season with a new tent canvas from Canvas Replacements. To learn more or to order a new canvas, visit canvasreplacements.com or call 800-232-2079. Be sure and visit the new RollingOnTV.com where you'll find weekly shows along with a selection of videos, stories, information, and the latest RV news. Our lifestyle pages are full of great stories about places to go, things to do, and what's new. Written by our viewers and RV writers from around the country. And if you're into great food and drinks, then visit our food and beverage pages where we'll get your taste buds up and ready for an Epicurean adventure. All this and more on the new RollingOnTV.com. Today, it's easy to buy a vehicle that's ready for towing right from the showroom floor. But if you have a vehicle without towing gear and you want to haul a trailer, it's fairly easy to outfit your ride with the necessary towing hardware. We'll show you how. Item number one on our project list is a hitch receiver. Now your vehicle may come equipped with a bumper that has a ball mount on it, but do yourself a favor. Get yourself a hitch receiver. It's a lot stronger and safer way to tow. Now we're using this particular model from Draw Type Sequin Industries. It comes powder coated black for extreme resistance to corrosion and rust and so on. Fully welded, very strong unit. The Hitch Pro guys will have this mounted up in no time. If you're handy with tools, you can install the receiver yourself, but it helps to have a friend to wrestle it into place because it's fairly awkward and heavy. Most receivers bolt to the rear frame and fishing the bolts into place in a boxed-in frame can be a challenge, which is where experienced installers can make the job easier. The trailer wiring plug often fastens to the receiver, so installing it is the next step after the receiver is in place. The plug needs to be fairly close to the receiver and easily accessible when connecting the trailer. Routing the plug wiring forward to the engine compartment and into the cab calls for making sure it's in safe locations where it won't be damaged by moving parts or burned by hot exhaust system components. Zip ties and protective wire sleeves are used throughout to secure the lines and guard against damage. A bit of extra time at this stage pays off later in reliability. Excess wiring is neatly bundled with zip ties and electrical tape. With the wiring in place, we move on to the brake control. The brake control we're using is a Takancha Model P3, kind of a higher end product. This will handle as many as four axles, which is a lot more than our little Nissan truck can take. It has the usual manual brake application lever on the bottom for emergency trailer braking. And it has a digital readout here. And this, this unit can be customized. You can have, it has a memory, so you can program it for towing characteristics for up to five different trailers. Plus, the readout gives you all kinds of different diagnostic feedback information about the trailer. Uh, short circuits, excess power drain, open circuits, and so on. It's a pretty handy unit. It'll, it's gonna work pretty well for this application. It's important to choose the right spot for the brake control. So with the brake control, there's a couple things you want to do before you get ready to mount it. You want to look at areas that's going to be accessible. You want to keep it out of your knees. Uh, generally on the left hand side is going to be getting hit with your knee a lot. So to the right side is the best place to place. You want it high enough to reach, but not too low that's out of reach. The controller bracket and the brake control screw in place under the dash. 
Then the wiring harness plugs in for the final connection. The P3 information screen gives you easy access to adjusting the display in its color, the type of trailer brakes, a help menu with language and other parameters, plus a variety of other towing related important information. It also warns if the trailer is disconnected. So there's a left turn signal. That's coming out of the plug. There's a right turn. The Hitch Pro test box verifies that all the wiring is in order. When it comes to outfitting your tow vehicle, you have a virtually unlimited array of gadgets and accessories you can add. In the performance arena, not an awful lot of those accessories have what you would call a 100% guarantee of, of return on investment. Well, Bilstein shock absorbers are about as close as you can come to that kind of return on investment and guaranteed performance. Bilsteins are the replacement shock of choice for an awful lot of motor vehicle owners. That includes tow vehicles for RVs, motor homes, performance automobiles, off-road driving enthusiasts, you name them. There's a, there's a Bilstein shock designed specifically to fit just about every vehicle out there. And it's no one size fits all either. Each shock is specifically engineered and valved to fit the type of vehicle it's going on. Bilstein shocks are made in Germany, so they have that touch of precision German engineering. They're a monotube design, they have a gas pressure chamber, and that gas chamber, along with precision valving, allows the shocks to help maintain rebound and jounce control. When you put these on your vehicle, you almost immediately will notice an improvement in ride and handling, cornering, braking, and so forth. In the long run, Bilsteins also help to reduce tire wear because it helps to control tire rebound, keeps them in contact with the pavement where they belong instead of scuffing up and down. Now, of course, we've already added our receiver, brake control, and wiring. So Bilstein shocks are one of the three other items we're gonna be adding to our truck to bring it fully up to speed to get it ready for towing smaller trailers. Let's take a look at how it's done. We'll talk about safety and finish the towing setup after the break, so stay tuned. At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, visit us online at Jayco.com or just log on to RollingOnTV.com. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcole refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norcol RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcol.com. Welcome back to Rolling On TV. Before the break, we began our story about setting up a vehicle with the right towing hardware. Now we'll continue with installing the shock absorbers and other gear. Safety is foremost when working on a vehicle. We always chalk the tires and, depending on the situation, we use jack stands plus stacks of wood blocks as backup safety setups. Installing shock absorbers is usually a fairly easy do-it-yourself project. At times, you need to temporarily move a nearby item, such as this sway bar mount, that's in the way of removing the shock. Most shock absorbers use simple mounting bolts or studs to hold them in place, so changing them is a matter of unbolting the old and replacing them with the new. A shot of spray lubricant helps the new rubber bushings slide smoothly onto the mounting studs. Rubber mounting eyes here. Slide on the mounting pins a little easier. Pressure at an angle. To get this Bill Steins are gas pressurized, so they need to be compressed a bit to fit them in place and this can take a bit of muscling around. Okay. 
We left the rear tires in place for the rear shock job, but we removed the front tires for easier shock access. A top stud and bottom bolt hold the front shocks in place. Replacement with the new Bilsteins is a fairly easy remove and install process. We're not going to be cluttering up our truck with every possible bolt-on accessory in the book. However, we're adding just a few things that we feel really enhance the towing experience. One of those things is airbags for the rear axle. The airbags mount over the axle to the frame on your truck. And what these do is provide extra support for the weight that you're carrying in the back of the truck. Now, if you're towing a small trailer and you have a weight distributing hitch with the spring bars properly adjusted, you won't have a significant amount of sag in back because the distributing hitch moves the weight of the, of the tongue to the rear and the front axle of the truck equally. That's what a dis weight distributing hitch is all about. But if you're going to be carrying a load in the back of your truck, for example, uh, a truck camper, a slide-in camper of some kind, uh, maybe a fifth wheel hitch where all of the weight is directly over the rear axle, or for that matter, if you're not towing anything and you want to bring home a load of bark dust chips, that's where airbags can be a big help. One of the big advantages to airbags like this is you adjust the air pressure to match the load. When you're running solo and you don't need that extra firm support in back, you let the air pressure down and you still have the smooth ride out of your truck. When you're going to be carrying weight, you add air pressure and that allows you to carry the weight without sagging the back end of the truck. Now these guys, for example, this Sport Right kit is rated to carry as much as 3,000 pounds per pair of bags. That obviously would far exceed the capacity of this little Nissan truck, but that means that we have a lot of flexibility in there for how much pressure we need to put in. Now, there are a few things that airbags like this will not do for your vehicle. Number one, they will not increase your tow rating. Number two, they do not increase your gross vehicle weight rating. Number three, they do not increase your gross axle weight rating. Those figures are all established by a series of proving ground tests and performance evaluations that allow a manufacturer to certify the truck for a certain capacity for all those figures. Now this Firestone Sportrite kit includes all the pieces you need for an installation. All the bracketry, small hardware, air hoses and so on. The manufacturer claims this is a bolt-on kit with no drilling. Well, we'll see how that goes when we get started on it here. With the brackets bolted to the airbags, we use the upper jounce bumper bolts to secure the assembly in place on the truck's frame. Adding the lower bracket strap is also an easy bolt-on assembly to the leaf spring pack. With that, the airbag is installed. The air hose is a simple press fit connection with the airbag fitting and the air filling valve. Protecting the air lines is important, especially where raw metal edges are close to the line. So we used rubber tubing and the kit's heat shield braided cover plus zip ties to keep the air lines intact and leak free. We chose a well protected but accessible spot at the back of the bed for the air inflation valve. The final check for leaks is a bubble test with soapy water. The system passed, so it's ready for the road. Well, that's about it for setting up our little Nissan for towing. With a few pieces of properly selected equipment, and it's not particularly expensive, you too can have a vehicle that's just right for towing your favorite trailer. For more information about what you've seen on this segment or anywhere else in the show, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. We hope you enjoyed the program, and for more information on anything you've seen on this week's show, along with additional videos and stories, visit our new website at rollingontv.com. For the latest up-to-the-minute RV news, visit our media partners at rvbusiness.com. Looking to buy an RV? For one of the largest selections of new and used RVs online, visit our partners at rvt.com. For 
great recipes and RVing tips, be sure to visit Evan Schmatter at the RVCookingShow.com. Thank you.